Okay, hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome back to part 12 of my Millennialist campaign here in Suzerain. Uh, so, we're just going to keep uh, rolling right along here. Oh, first off, let's see what it said here in the uh, visits to school. Uh, nobody's mentioning me taking down the soul uh, portrait so far. Let me just check, members of the assembly have been arrested. Wait, what? <clears throat> Mikhail Mosliner, an MP from the National Front Party, was arrested on Tuesday for supporting the Young Swords organization and aiding terrorism. At least two other NFP members were also detained, lawyers said, in a major escalation of the government's crackdown on its opponents in the wake of the murder of Bernard Serkas. Raids also took place in the cities of Jen and Erlery. The raids took place against a backdrop of rising criticism over the government's purge, which also saw the issuing of arrest warrants against two editors of the Whole Sword Post, who were known to be supporters of the Young Sword organization. Okay, this is a problem. Because, um... I actually was gonna lie to the NFP and try to get them to support this this constitution before I keep going millenniavist on their asses. Uh... But we need them to be arrested after the constitutional vote, so this is kind of <laughs> interesting and weird. Um, let's see here. During the visit, the president was seen speaking with the pupils and school staff before he ordered the removal of Tarquin Soul's portrait from the building. The reasoning behind this controversial, and yet something so controversial yet so brave, move still stands as an unknown, but it will create problems. Is it the sign the USP is feeling the pressure? The foundations of the USP and the cult victory of Tarkin's all seem to be losing its strength. Hmm. Okay. So, we're going to go over the the plan. Uh, educational reform is necessary. Exactly. Those students have to repeat that same soulless propaganda every single day. They're being brainwashed at an age when their minds need to be free. On top of that, young girls are denied the same opportunity as boys. They're forced into the role of housewife before they even reach puberty. Nothing's changed since I went to school. Women like me, Lilius, Nia, even your wife. We had to study twice as hard to receive the same university education that you and Lucian took for granted. Is that the kind of country you want your daughter to grow up in? Mr. President, we need to bring change. We need to free the minds of these people. They are our future. All right, what do we need to do? We need to keep politics out to the curriculum. Soul should only be viewed as a historical figure. Children shouldn't have to repeat his name every day. This is actively poisoning young bright minds. Instead of thinking for themselves, they're learning to take things at face value. Let's see. Handcrafts like knitting and sewing should be taught to both sexes or not at all. Swordland's use must be technically skilled and capable for the next decade. That won't be possible with the amount of nationalistic indoctrination and narrow-minded thinking found in schools today. Either we raise a generation ready for the challenges of the future or not. What will it be, Mr. President? Reform it. Let's go. I'll get to work immediately. Now, now that the decision is made, let's move on. Very well. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how to do the money. Um, I don't think we're going to go private this time, which actually might end up being a problem because... Uh, because if we privatize, I think we get some government budget back. But we're doing planned economy. It was our promise. And if it's a problem, well, it's a problem we'll have to deal with. I think I said this at the start of the campaign. The planned economy route is supposed to be rather difficult. Because you can't just privatize everything and basically get free... Well, not free money, but it's like... You at least get short-term money. Uh, but the education should remain as a state service only. Certainly, this is the most ideal situation. I agree. The government should be responsible for managing education completely. Private education is inconsistent with our overall economic plan of a planned economy. You know what? I get the sense that Lucian, his dialogue, just sort of... Uh, what would be the word? It would, um... It, it adjusts based on what we promised. So, for example, I'm sure if we had said, I want to do a uh, private economy, private planning stuff, then right now he'd go, oh, I don't know about that planned economy. It's not what we promised. You know, he's, like, almost softly hinting what we're supposed to be doing at any point. Um, anyway. A few moments of deliberation passed. 
We have enough money to improve education in Swordland. We do not need to complicate things further with a privatization incentive. So, what is your decision? Keep education solely a matter of the state. We need to prevent interference from private interests. Will do. That should be it for now. I will get to work and report back later. Alright. Thank you all for your time. Okay. Hmm. Why did I think that we were going to go into the details there, like about rural schooling or something? Maybe that's a different meeting. Welfare! We have modernized education techniques. The influence of traditional teaching has been curved. I'll tell you what, though, we still have a whole lot of red stuff, especially in the economy and military. So, what is this? Start the Reformation. News. What's the news today? People getting fired. Walking on the rock. Richter says, uh, the form committee's all talk, no action. The PFJP cannot be a part of this collaboration anymore. Uh, okay. Whatever, you'll, you'll vote for shit and like it. Demonstrators have been arrested. Alright, what's next? Uh, Ministry of Education is beginning the reform. Um... United Contana has launched its second satellite. I'm really wondering when we're going to start working with them more. The SSC managers have been uh, getting replaced. They're going to try their best to fix the situation. The police budget is restoring stability. And finally, we're going to meet with Gloria Tory on planned reforms. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Oh, my God. This part makes me so Gloria Tory, for those of you who saw my live stream series, she was kicking my ass ass up down and all around um the uh the negotiating table uh it was really really bad uh so what we're gonna hopefully do is uh swing this um i'm hoping <sighs> all right here we go Today, I had a private meeting with Gloria Torrey, one of the leading figures of the USP, to get her approval for the new uh, for proposal. She was also key in reaching 150 signatures to propose the new constitution, as she had extensive control over our party's conservative and moderate wings. As I walked through the corridors of the Grand National Assembly, I was confronted by my memories of the historic building. It now felt like just a past. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, hello, Gloria. Let's try to be friendly. Good to see you here, Mr. Rain. So just to review, Gloria Tory, so Swordish politician, member of the Assembly, current speaker. She's been a member of the Assembly since 1937, graduate from Whole Sword, president of the student uh, organization Republican Youth, meaning Republican as in the Republic, not as in like the American Republican political party. Remember, different things, different, same words can mean different things in different countries, including alternate ones. I was actually thinking about that today, about um, like uh, the term union. So like unionism means one thing in the United States and it means something else on in Ireland. Um, and uh, there's probably not a ton of crossover with people who would like both. Uh, anyway, uh, so good to, so, so, oh yeah. Um, she supported democratic revolutionaries. She organized major rallies during the last years of the Swordish monarchy. So she's old school. She's old school Republican, like the, the Artur Visky days. She became a member of the United Swordland National Committee from Vestlord. She was quickly, she rose quickly. She was elected to the assembly in 37. So she wasn't even appointed, she was actually elected. She was then later appointed as an advisor to the Minister of Interior. She was the front bench spokeswoman for Home Affairs in 42 and Education in 44. She was elected speaker four years ago in 49. She protested the reformist agenda. First woman to be speaker of the assembly. Strong critic of Alfonso, famed for her obstructions in the assemblies of his policies. A charismatic politician, tough negotiator. Uh, major lobbying incidents within the USP. And she's just been elected speaker a second time. So she is the party elder of the usp absolutely positively basically the strongest usp politician that's not me right and i guess we're gonna see who's really strong so anyway uh she has a very homey office um i love what you did with the office she smiled a woman's touch they call it like men cannot have a sense of tidiness or style 
which might actually be true. Anyway, let's keep this simple, Mr. Rain. We both know why we are here. I can't, I can't do I'm, I can't, I'm trying to do Meryl Streep doing Margaret Thatcher, and she just gets so high. Um, we both know why we are here. You want me to... I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I don't see why the backbone of the USP should, would support your rush reforms. Don't they, you realize to go against the wishes of the founder of the party and the state? So this is kind of interesting. Because, um, like, last time I tried to talk to her was because I was going for democratic reforms. Um, I don't know. We might have to, incidentally, and I'm not going to feel ashamed doing it, we might have to reload to the past checkpoint on this because I think... This really felt like the toughest part of the whole freaking game before. Um, so we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to see what we could do here. Um, so I'm gonna say to her, uh, the reforms are against not everybody, it's in the main... Yeah, I'm gonna say the reforms are not against anyone, it's all in the name of democracy. Uh, in the name of democracy? Even though you owe everything to Colonel Saul, you think you never liked him, nor the party he built. There, I would never betray our party. Whatever you intend to do, you will be facing quite the opposition. That's all I could say. Hmm. You must understand that these reforms are a necessity. Let me explain. Uh, how? Uh, we need these, ref uh, hold on a sec, um, we need to fix the Supreme Court, the people demand change, the USP must give them what they want, we need the people's support. Yeah. I'm aware that our, uh, popularity has been on the decline, but I blame it on this administration, Mrs. Rain. Plus, these reforms are not about the people, are they? I seriously do not know if the conservatives would be willing to support you at all, especially considering the fact that you are trying to change the member of honor laws. It is clearly a move against, um, President Seoul. You want to punish him for the aggressive policies he pursued in the past? Is that the intention here? Uh, you cannot win this fight, Mr. President. Seoul built this republic in the midst of blood and chaos. He demands respect. I'm, I, like, I'm not even attempting to do the thing. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to say this is not about Seoul. Isn't it? You have promised to reform our government branches, yet your proposal points to another agenda. What are you talking about? There is no agenda. Oh, I'm sure there isn't. Uh... Come on, let's try to find some... Let's see, I promise... I think I'm just gonna have to lie to her. She's a fucking conservative. Screw her! Millenniavism all the way. We just gotta... We gotta work with these people just long enough to get the power. And then once you get the power, you can do whatever you want, man. Uh, so, I'm just gonna lie to her. I promise we won't touch him, but these ancient laws should be removed. Fine. Let's talk about your other points. You, see, you, just, got, you just lie to him. You just lie to her. It's that easy. I must say that I like the changes regarding the appointment of ministers. That's one positive aspect. But moving on, yeah, it's just a, yes, I praise you here, but I don't want you to get the wrong idea, Baka. Let's move on to things I hate. It is unbelievable that you are taking away the immunity of justices. A big mistake. Um, a president that has the power to impeach justices will be very dangerous in the future. We shouldn't damage the separation of powers. This is something I cannot accept. I don't see anything democratic here, Mr. President. Can you... Um, uh, let's see here. This will benefit the party. 
No. Uh, bright future for... So uh, party, 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 party. I continue to disagree. So what are you thinking about? Are you ready to make changes to your proposal, or should we keep talking past each other? Mrs. Tory, please try to understand me. I cannot give concessions now. She raised an eyebrow, then took a look at the proposal on her table. You know what? I feel extra generous today. I believe I can give you the help you require. She repositioned herself on the chair. I do have one condition. I want you to cancel that speech you were planning for your wife at the Benfi Festival. Okay, we, we were planning for this. It's going to be good in the long run. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna acquiesce. Ma Mayor Liste is not only popular in Benvy, he is one of the most influential members of the USP's conservative wings. We wouldn't want to upset him, would we? Fine, I'll have Monica taken off the schedule and let him speak. Let's, uh, let's let her act like she's, we're gonna act like she's winning. Wonderful! Just don't forget, Mr. President, the conservatives will be expecting a lot from you. I will be expecting a lot from conservatives as well. Increasing the threshold to 15% ought to modify a lot of lifetime USP members. It secures our advantageous position and further consolidates it by leaving other parties out. I can get you the signatures needed for the proposal. I'll talk to the other conservatives. I hope there won't be any surprises though, Mr. President. Uh, what surprises? Your lack of faith in me is disappointing. We have to calculate every possibility, Mr. President. After all, I do not see eye to eye with your other policies, especially your promotion of Eastern values. Getting closer to United Cantana will definitely create huge problems for us. I hope you're not going to follow through with that idea to the end. Flirting with the Millennialists will only bring us trouble. Of course, I can't guarantee that all the conservatives of the party will vote for your constitutional changes. I have serious reservations about privatizing health care or the Sordish State Corporation. The support of my faction can change. Oh, is this new dialogue? I don't remember this. Oh, then again, I didn't do planned economy before, but then she would have had an issue. But we're not going to privatize health care and we're not going to privatize the Sordish State or Corporation. So this is a non-issue that she's bringing up. Uh... This will depend on some extent to your policies, but the signatures, at least, are as good as gathered. Um, <clears throat> which policies make you concerned? Let's kind of review this real quick. I'm concerned about the oligarchs and the state of our economy. I'm worried they may influence you for their own benefit. <laughs> Non-issue. Nice, nice, nice. Um, we expect you to succeed where Alfonso failed in resisting their siren call. If you start... Start privatizing healthcare, state-owned corporations. I doubt I could help you. I am not Alfonso. I know. That's why I want to see you succeed. She stood up. I believe I've made myself clear. Thanks for stopping by, Mr. President. I hope you'll hold your promises. She extended her hand to me for a handshake. Once I shook her hand, she immediately sat back down. But now I need to get back to my duties. If you'll excuse me, Mr. President... I understand. I'll leave you to it. She only responded with a nod as I left her office. The conservative side was handled, but to get the 150 signatures I needed, I was still to deal with Albin Calvin and the reformist wing. Well, that went really well, I think. Uh, the wife, what, what did we concede on with our wife giving the speech? We already were ready to do that. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Next up, Alvin Calvin, this bitch. Um, okay. Uh, so, I also plan to present a more fleshed out proposal. We entered the quarters of the USP, and now we're looking for Alvin Calvin. So let's, let's review who this dude is. He's a Swordish politician who currently serves as a member of the Grand National Assembly of Swordland since 1949. He is a member of USP and regarded to be the leader of the progressive faction of the party. He recently risen to significance during the Alfonso administration as an aggressive debater and strong supporter of Ewald Alfonso and his policies. He was instrumental in the passing of the free market reforms of Alfonso. He became famed for his controversial speeches in the Grand National Assembly and was labeled as the face of a new generation of the USP by the media. 
After the recession, he joined the calls for Congress to elect a new presidential nominee and abandoned his support to Ewald Afonso. Albin nominated himself as the next candidate, but did not get much support in the Congress, which eventually led to the candidacy of Anton Rain. He has been calling for constitutional reform with the election of Rain. Oh, Cla Clavin. Did I say Calvin or your Clavin? Like, like the clave, the, that beat, you know, the... Except he is not, uh, he has no sabor in him. This guy just, he's a trash bag that floats in the wind with every breeze. Mr. President, a wilk. I'm gonna give him a stupid voice. He's got books and dossiers. Did a bomb drop in this office? He laughed. <laughs> you could say that. So much research and preparation. Now that's insulting to Southerners. Um... Uh, so much research and uh, preparation needs to be done on the plans we're working on. I was having talk slow. How's everything going for you, Mr. President? Um, uh, depends on our meeting today. No, actually, don't even show that. I'm gonna say I'm feeling pretty good, bitch. I wanted to it's actually no this guy seems like he would try to portray himself as high class when we are so we're gonna try to maybe do for like a high-pitched received pronunciation or like a, a received pronunciation things like or, or I could try to go for like a, a Gaius Baltar thing Balsar Galactica here I'm always talking like here I'm always trying to think about what accents to do and how I want to do them and then I can't actually perform them I'd probably be a good film director and you know demand of my actors things of things that I can't do myself I wanted to express my gratitude for passing the Workers' Rights Act. It's one of my most comprehensive and successful political efforts. Oh, do I want to say the Workers' Revolution? <laughs> just just kind of flash myself a little bit here. This guy's so corrupt, I bet he wouldn't give a fuck if I said that Leon Malenyevis was going to have a direct line to my office and I'd be giving him... Uh, the, yeah, oh yeah, so I probably should give context for those of you who don't know. Cla uh, Clavin here, when I tried to do the reform package, admittedly this is a more authoritarian package, but when I tried to do the reform one, he pretty much said, yes, everything here is what I love. I'm not going to vote for it, though. Not unless you make me vice president. He was trying to he was trying to play hardball. I'm like, fuck this guy. We might just lie to him, too, but uh, we'll go ahead and flash a little bit. The workers' revolution will begin with small steps. What would think that I'm talking to Miss Valda? The par oh yeah, the party doesn't support such ideologies, as you know. Personally, there are some uh, principalities, uh, some prince. I'm forgetting what voice I'm doing for this fucker. Um, personally, there are some principles that I respect in millennialism, but I wouldn't accept it in its entirety. <laughs> Albert smiled and knocked on wood. Anyway, sir, let's talk about the proposal. Uh, thanks for coming. Oh, knocking on wood like with the fist. And, and he's just like, he'll just do whatever he can to get to power. He's fucking um, Frank Underwood, a.k.a. Uh, Francis Erkart. So I should, oh yeah, let me do like the obnoxious South Carolinian accent, though. So, anyway, sir, let's talk about the proposal. Thanks for coming here for my input, because there are some subjects where glory and I don't see eye to eye. What I didn't expect was a worse, and it, okay, for by the way, real quick, because for those of you who haven't seen the American version of House of Cards, um... Some seasons are good, some seasons are bad, but anyway, he's, he's, the whole thing is that he's just making moves for power, for power's sake. He doesn't actually have ideology. So, for example, he's a Democratic congressman, but, like, it's a major plot point in the, uh, in the, the first season where he's trying to take away the rights of teachers to collectively bargain, you know, get, and things like that, um... Which is something that no Democrat in the United States, at least no 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 serious one, would ever support uh, as a policy. Um, but like he does things like that and, and other stuff, and it's like yeah, he's a Democrat in quotation marks, but it's like he doesn't actually believe in anything. It doesn't matter if he's a Democrat or a Republican. He's just doing whatever he can that he thinks is going to help him advance. Um, so that's how I feel about this guy Clavin. It's like he just. He says he's a reformist, but he's not with the Social Democrats, who are the Reform Party. <coughs> he's with the USP, which is the strongest party. And, um... <coughs> oh, excuse me. What's up? Number throat. Got a little hiccup. And so, like... 
he's clearly trying to rise from within. He's just, yeah. Um, it would, it would destroy the separation of powers. This particular change is specifically where he's talking about the making presidential decrees is specifically worrying, uh, as it represents an opposite trend. The weak, the, the decrees need to be weaker, not stronger. <sighs> Mm. I respect the perspective of the reformist ring. Enough to make a slight change that would heavily influence our tendencies to support the draft. I suggest limiting the power of the decrees with an enabling act. The assembly should have some control over a potential rogue president. And if you really care about further democratic reforms, we'll, we'll issue the Enabling Act. But we have to make sure the presidents can't work alone anymore. Let's see here. Mm. I don't trust the Assembly to give me the power to enact major reforms, though. I thought you wanted to discuss a change. There must be another way. I have to say that most of the progressives were already starting to warm up to you. Your attempt at changing the Constitution created quite a bit of excitement. One could dare to say an excitement that hasn't been felt since the 1930s. Yet, there are some issues with the current status of the draft proposal, so we may need to contain our excitement a little longer. I suspect that Mrs. Torrey had a lot of influence on this proposal, but I cannot support it in its current state. Mm, I'm, I want to try to bait him into, to you know, wanting the bribe. I want to bait him into saying, make me your vice president. And I'll just lie. You know, I'll just say, uh, sure, sure, buddy. You got it. And so just fucking lie to him, you know, right? I need your support, Mr. Clavin. A fact that I'm aware of. But at this point, even my support would not be enough. Hmm... Tell me the issues. How can I get your support? Dude, I'm really stupid, Clavin. What can I do? Where to even begin? First, I'll say that I'm concerned about the increase in the threshold. The reformist wing of the party will do its best to boycott that, since the expectation from us is to democratize, not do the opposite. First, I'll say that I'm concerned with the increase in the threshold. The reform I thought he already said that. He paused and twiddled his thumbs. Reformists were expecting a reform about the term limits. Why is that not included in the proposal? This is only my first term is too soon to bring term limits. So you want to use the flaws of the system for your own benefit. Could you tell me, what is your priority with this proposal? Uh... The balance and division of powers, I guess. And you're doing more than that, aren't you? Taking away the immunity of the justices and giving the power to replace them to yourself. A worrying notion. Do you want me to believe that? He looked down at the proposal. There might still be a way for me to get behind this. Remove to the, cha the change to the threshold and we will be golden. No need to agitate our party, Mr. President. I think we need to save that for negotiating with the NFP. Or not the NFP, the, um, the NJ, the, the fucking, the, the Social Democrats. They're probably going to have a problem. Nope, can't do it. This is not enough, Mr. President. We, we can take another look over the draft or... Him and his freaking ellipses. I hate ellipses. Perhaps there's something else you could offer me. Hmm. Sure, I'll offer you something else. <clears throat> I'm all ears. If you give us your su uh, no, if you give up, if you give us your support, you'll be my VP in my next cabinet. Which, like, there's no second term in this game unless they're gonna do an expansion down the line. But as of now, there is no second term, so who cares, right? I need the votes today. Collusion, huh? An interesting proposal, one that is very hard to turn down. 
Especially now that I think we align, Mr. President. Can I hold you to that promise? As long as I get your support. Good. Then it seems like we have a deal. I will talk to my guys shortly. I'll have their signatures soon. Don't botch it. Just gonna hit a little backhand on the way out. I won't. He left his room and went back into the corridor. The meeting had exhausted me. So we went to the restaurant, talking people in the difference, to all the present members of the party inside the hall. Gloria Tori announced me from the stand. Everyone started clapping. Oh, uh, so I guess it's now time to talk to the party. I thought that we were going to, um... Uh... I thought we were going to do anything. So I guess what we're going to say, uh... I don't know, hype them up. Uh, brothers and sisters of United Swordland, I come here today, I came here today to announce the agenda for the future of our country. I started my speeches with the reasons of the changes to the Constitution. Mm, the people of Swordland have spoken. They blame our institutions and our systems and want change. Can you blame the people? Haven't we had enough with the flaws in our constitution? We must listen to their wishes and get their trust in Swordland back. I paused as they started clapping and continued. Uh, who do we want to go after? Let's talk about democracy. <clears throat> we must write a more democratic constitution. My our proposal will fix the issues. The left side of the hall where all been sat started applauding. Later, I explain the contents of the new constitution and act for their full support for the proposal. I asked for each and every member's vote to make a change together. The reformist wing on the left stood up and started clapping loudly after Alvin Clavin made a sign. Soon after, most of the party members stood up and joined in. I saluted everybody in the room one last time and bid them farewell before leaving the stand. I walked outside the assembly and back into the to Alice. Okay. What do we got here? Alvin has promised the reformer swing will support the package. Sweet. So just to review, let's take a look at the legislative body. So if we got everybody behind us, you know, there'll be a couple that leave. But, you know, we got 130 here in theory. We need, what, 160? Or is it 150? Let's go for 160. You know, we're just going to, um... Um... Let's see here. I think we're gonna, yeah, we get the NFP on our side. We lie to them. We're just lying. We're just lying our way to the new constitution. You know, we'll, we'll get the votes. President meets the USP. Okay. So that's it. Uh, well, I guess let's hit continue. And then we'll uh, figure out what to do from here. Mm-hmm. Balance of power in Eastern Mercopa. Uh, okay, this is a little awkward. It's just kind of stuck here. <laughs> um, what is going on here? This is like kind of the one part of the game that's a little annoying here. How it just it kind of takes a little while to do the. There we go, all the way. Awesome. So, we'll pick things up in the next episode. What are we doing next? Religious Harmony Bill. I don't remember which one that is off the top of my head. And United Quintana offers aid! And Swordland will answer. Wait, no. It's, it's the converse. Uh, but, but, uh, Alright, cool. So it looks like we're going to start uh, working with United Quintana uh, next episode. So, I hope you guys are looking forward to that, because I sure am. Um, anyway, I will, uh, see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.